Let's take a look at PicoScope basics, in particular understanding how to set up the PicoScope. Let's look at the advantages of an oscilloscope in general first though. First of all, the biggest advantage is that it gives you a visual representation of a signal, or in other words voltage or amperage in a circuit. Scopes are extremely fast. They have high sampling rates. The PicoScope 4000 series that was sent to your dealership has a max sampling rate of 80 mega samples per second. In other words, it samples the signal 80 million times in one second. Now let's compare that to a quality multimeter. Even if that multimeter graphs, it is much slower. A quality multimeter can sample uh, a signal about one millisecond. Or in other words, it samples a signal a thousand times in one second. Considerably slower. So here's a good question. If PicoScope is such a valuable tool, why don't Toyota technicians use the PicoScope more often? Here's a thought that might explain this. First of all, TechString spoils us. Without any back probes, extra wiring, or setup skills, TechStream can graph any data parameter with just a click of a button. There's a problem with this fact though. The sampling rate of TechStream is quite often slower than even a multimeter. So depending on the amount of data being sampled, it can be even slower than that multimeter. So in other words guys, there is great potential to miss issues in signals if you're relying on a multimeter or TechStream. So, to answer this question even further, why techs don't use PicoScope more often, here is the number one answer I get when I ask the question. It takes too long to set up. Huh? To hook up PicoScope, all I have to do is have a, a wire for doing the sampling, and then a printer cable that goes from the box to the computer itself. So what do they mean when they say it takes too long to set up? Well, what they mean by it being hard to set up is they're talking about both the voltage and time divisions. Let's take a look at this. First of all, PicoScope auto ranges its voltage. So on the vertical is our voltage. In this situation, the system is actually auto ranging it to a 5 volt range. Now auto means that it can change automatically. On the horizontal, we have time. This is saying that there is five milliseconds in each division all the way across for a total of 50 milliseconds. Voltage and time has everything to do with how we view this signal. Let's start with time. Let's go from five milliseconds to 200 milliseconds. Notice how it took our signal and just squashed it together. Could this be confusing? You bet. Let's go the other direction now. Here we were at 5 milliseconds. Now let's go to another division, right around 2 microseconds. Now it's just stretched out too far. So here's a trick. Pico has auto setup, the lightning bolt up in the corner. Now it has analyzed our signal and turned it into something more usable on the time scale. To stabilize this even further, we're going to use a trigger, an auto trigger. Now a diamond has shown up on the screen, and it's going to capture it at a given point. So what this is saying is that on the rising edge of our signal on channel A, it's going to capture it at that voltage and at that percentage in the screen, 50%. I can move this trigger either manually by clicking and dropping or I can go ahead and alter it by the settings on the bottom. Now I'm switching it percentage wise across the screen. Okay now let's take a look at a common problem. Here we have a signal that is all over the place vertically and it seems to be jumping all over the place and it makes no sense. Well what we are dealing with is the aspect of a changing voltage but the system is trying to auto range it. 
Now that is going to make it jump vertically on the screen. I like to say that auto ranging voltage can be both a blessing and a curse because visually it's very confusing. So let's see how we can prevent this from happening. Automobiles will very rarely have a voltage over 20 volts. So I'm going to lock this into a division lower than 20 volts. In this case, 10 volts. Notice how my voltage is now much more stable. And I see that it's just changing from 0 to 8 volts. So now with time, I'm going to be able to figure out how I can see the transitions from 0 to 8 volts. So going up to our time, we are defaulted at 5 milliseconds. So let's go ahead and squash it together a little bit. There you go. By putting it in this time division, I can see the transitions from 0 to 8 volts. And I see it's a digital signal. OK, so what do we know so far? With an oscilloscope, voltage is on the vertical. Auto ranging voltage is great, but if our voltage changes rapidly, it can make the signal jump vertically all over the screen. And this can be confusing. So fact guys, an automobile commonly has voltages lower than 20 volts. So the trick is this, to prevent the vertical instability, manually put the voltage division in a range of 20 volts or lower. So it's not jumping all over the screen. From there, you can change the time division to either squash the signal together or spread it out. Increasing the time to each division squashes the signal. Decreasing the time to each division spreads it out. It's just that simple. Okay, so let's add in the aspect of the auto setup function. Here's our signal jumping all over the place. It's trying to auto range everything. The lightning bolt, remember that? Here I click on it and now it's put it into a time division that's close and a voltage division that's stabilized a little bit further too. Notice however it is still changing from 20 volt to a 10 volt range as well. So manually ranging that, the, that voltage is very beneficial. Also this is going to be a great way to put it in close to roundabout or nearby time divisions as well. Step it a couple of directions in one way or another, and you should be golden.